Hello again, I am Eric Grubaugh, your NetSuite Technical Advisor, and today I want to dive in to one of the challenges of scaling up a NetSuite development team, which is building a sound hiring process. You'll recall that I was tasked with doubling the size of a NetSuite development team. As we discussed previously, finding experienced NetSuite developers seemed next to impossible for us. The search was exhausting and rarely fruitful. We already had a very high turnover rate among our developers, and our hiring process just was not stringent enough to find the right level of talent that we needed for our developers. So we knew we had to overhaul the hiring process in order to get anything else right as we scaled up the team. So we did some research on hiring developers and we came across a short book called Smart and Gets Things Done. There's a link down in the video description. Uh, this book is by Joel Spolsky, who is a very prominent and influential figure in the larger software development community. And he has a very blunt, uh, strict approach to hiring, which really resonated with us. Now, while we didn't implement every part of Joel's hiring process, we made significant changes to our process, which ultimately I believed helped us to identify the right type of candidate and drastically reduce our, tur our turnover rates. So the fundamental premise of this hiring process is to answer three questions. Are they smart? Do they get things done? And are they not a jerk? Um, our first step was to build a common understanding of the goals of our hiring process. So what we, had, what we did was have both development managers and all of our senior developers read the book. Um, the final process that came out of that wasn't unique or groundbreaking in itself. But what we really shifted as part of this was our mindset on hiring. So we started the interview process with a one hour phone screen with one of the development managers. And the hour was broken up into four sections. Each section intended to answer one of the previous questions. And then that fourth section was to reverse the situation and let the candidate interview us about the company, and the position or whatever their concerns might be. Now, once the phone interview ended, it was the manager's responsibility to decide whether this person was worth bringing on site. And here is where we began to impose that crucial mindset shift. We made hiring a binary decision for every interviewer involved. Your only options were yes, I want to hire this person right now, or no, we should never hire this person. And this phone screen was the only vote that this particular manager would get for this particular candidate. So if the manager's vote was yes, the candidate would progress to a four hour on-site interview. And if their vote was no, they would not continue into the process at all. Um, every hour, of this on-site interview was uh, a separate interview with an employee occupying a different role on the candidate's prospective team. So it started with a one hour technical interview with their potential manager, then a one hour technical interview with the senior developer on their team, followed by a one hour interview with the team's QA analyst, and lastly, a one hour interview with the team's either business analyst or project manager. Uh, this would give us a well-rounded perspective on the candidate. So we have a couple of perspectives from the technical side and a couple from the non-technical side of the team. And then the day would wrap up with lunch with the entire team. So a little bit of a social relaxation time. Once uh, all of these interviews were one-on-one, -on -one, there were no group scenarios involved other than the lunch, which was casual. Um, once lunch was over and the candidate went on their way, 
everyone involved in interviewing that day would immediately face that same binary decision. Yes, I want to hire this person right now. No, we should never hire this person. There were no maybes allowed. So if you were at all on the fence, uh, your vote had to be no. The immediacy of the vote was important so that those gut reactions to the candidate did not wear off and were still strong. Uh, each interviewer was given their own 3x5 index card on which to record their vote. And so everyone went uh, separate, privately, wrote on one whole side of the index card either yes or no, just that one word. And then the other side could be used for any supporting detail, why, uh, any justifications for their vote. but. It's a three by five index card. There's not a lot of room there. So two to three sentences at the most. The index cards would be collected by the hiring manager and the vote had to be unanimous. If any one person voted no for a sound reason, we would not hire this candidate. Forcing the immediate, um, strictly binary decision is what I believe ultimately led to our much lower turnover as we scaled the team. Um, it's very likely that this strict process caused us to miss and pass on some perfectly qualified talent. Um, it's a pretty hard line stance to take, but we believed that to be worth it to protect our company and our teams uh, from instability and to truly find stellar qualified talent. Um, the entire process was codified and publicly documented for our entire department to see. By doing that, we were able to educate our own uh, technical resources to become better interviewers. And we were able to quickly gather feedback to iterate and improve the process for all of the future hires. So rather than having hiring be an isolated HR process, we involved the entire technical team in the process, which made them much more invested in the hiring process and thus much more invested in the company as well. So this let us build a full team of capable and confident interviewers, which also gave our hiring process a very uh, solid robustness to it. Um, we could very flexible. We could throw any of our team into the interviewing process and trust um, that they would be making a good decision. We, alongside that, we developed and documented a battery of interview questions, uh, dozens of them, that we could use in, at any stage of the interviewing process. Again, these were public. Everyone could read them, comment on them, and update them. And of course, we would document what are you looking for? What are the expected solutions? But we also documented what the interviewer should be watching for beyond the answer to the question. Um, your hiring process will be the first crucial step in effectively building your NetSuite team. So hopefully this has provided you with a little inspiration on how you can do so. See you soon.